No Rest for the Wicked is a new top-down action RPG released into early access last week from the creators of the stunning Ori games. With the same unique and beautiful art style, this game sits between Diablo 4 and a Dark Souls kind of playstyle. You play as a Serim, a holy warrior on a quest to destroy the evil pestilence that's spreading across the land. And when you're not battling these hordes of monsters and huge bosses, a big part of this game is managing a small town, crafting, upgrading, improving buildings and shops, and even purchasing and decorating your own home. This is still in early access and not everything is finished right now, but thanks to the devs for sending me a copy, I've managed to play through everything we have so far and I want to talk about it because this is impressive, it's beautiful and it's left me really wanting more. So I want to go over everything you need to know about No Rest for the Wicked, where it is right now, what it does well, what it's maybe lacking on and overall just a review of if it's worth your time. So first let's talk about the story and the gameplay, like what do you do in this game? This, I will face this by saying this is an early access game so I can't speak for the whole game. But what we have so far is really good. You play as this holy knight on a mission to fight evil, that's the, the summary. And I've gone through everything we have so far and it's pretty compelling. Usually you start with a cutscene, a lore and you build up to the next main quest. That unlocks a, a new zone and then you adventure through that zone for quite a while before you get tied back into the story. It's a good balance between letting you have the freedom to explore and play the game, and then these rich story moments. And they've really hit it out of the park with the different zones. Every zone feels unique. It doesn't feel like you're just playing through a big open world. It feels like you're almost going through these different biomes. Every place is just really weird, really unique, and they've just done a really good job of giving it individuality. So most of your gameplay is entering these new zones, pushing forward as far as you can get, and unlocking a new spawn point. Once you do these act more like checkpoints than um, like a fast travel, you sort of open up these spawn points, then you can respawn there or go back to town and back, like a like a direct route back to town and back. But you can't travel to any other pre-found uh, respawn point. So it's kind of when you get to a new zone, you push as far as you can, hit a checkpoint, keep pushing, hit a checkpoint, and then you kind of finish the zone and go back to town and then branch off to another zone. So it kind of makes each zone feel like its own adventure. The only critique so far that I have is that at times it feels like the game is pushing you back into these old zones repeatedly. And I'm, I've played the Dark Souls games and I normally just one shot straight through, never really farm XP. But this game, I always felt like I had to go back and get more XP, go back and get more resources for crafting, hit trees, mine rocks, or the challenges. There's like, a, there's like a guy who gives you challenges and they change every day. And that always sent you back to the old zones for the crafting recipes. So I always felt like I was backtracking rather than pushing forward. I managed to push through the story and got to sort of where it kind of ends for now in, the, in this level of early access, this repeatable zone. And all the mobs there were just really strong. They were sort of hitting for one shot. They were one shotting me and they were dropping level 21 items, tier three items. But my character, I think, was around level 14, 15. So it's definitely easy to fall behind if you don't go back and grind. But that's just my experience. And maybe yours will be completely different. Okay, next we'll talk about the combat because a lot of people are calling this a Souls-like game or a Dark Souls-like game. For two reasons. Firstly, the combat has the same weight and punishment of those kind of games. It's very easy to get overwhelmed by just two monsters. Bosses can destroy you in seconds. You have a basic attack, a charge, and then you can build up your focus for a special attack. This can be a big cleave, it can be a charge. If you're using a staff, it could be a magic ability. And for the most part, it's really challenging. If you make a mistake, if you stand in the wrong place, if you get hit in the, in the wrong way or by the wrong attack, it can be a one shot. You can you can really get punished in this game, which is which is great if you like that. I love those sort of games. So yeah, I felt like the challenge was was kind of spot on. It wasn't too easy, it wasn't too hard. Overall, it felt really good. The next area where it follows a souls like formula is the gear. Big heavy swords scale with strength. So as you level up, you need to put points into strength to make those stronger. Daggers and bows require dexterity to use, and then magic weapons scale with int. One really cool thing here is that lots of the weapons are hybrid. So I found a sword early on in the game that scaled with intelligence and strength. So I leveled both of those up and I had this electric sword, which was really fun to use. And you have to adapt to your playstyle. So if you go with a big sword and or a big shield, you're going to have heavy armor and you're going to be slow and you're going to have to rely more on parrying and blocking. And then if you go for, say, daggers or a bow or something dexterous, your character will be light and you'll rely more on rolling around and avoiding attacks because you can't take those big hits. So I wouldn't say this is a, a Souls-like game in in f fully, but it does have a lot of those elements. The combat feels really good too. The, the art and the animations are, they're stunning. When you parry something and then counter it and you see them stun, it feels good. When you land that charge and they just sort of their body just ragdolls up, it just feels great. And you can really like play into your play style as well. There's a lot of crafting of different items. There's a lot of you, you can embed gems in your weapons, you can enchant stuff, and you can really tailor your gear to fit your playstyle. So I was going for a life on hit, so I was playing more of a 
a aggressive playthrough where I could I could take damage and then I could hit and get health back, kind of like vampirism kind of mechanic, which was really fun. It let me be very chaotic and not worry too much about taking hits, not worry too much about food, which I really, really enjoyed. And if you're looking for more of a, you know, a defensive playthrough, there's stuff that lowers your armor weight, there's stuff that increases your armor percent, increases block chance, damage on block. There's a lot you can do here and I feel like every build will feel very different. Okay, now something that you might not expect, and everything we've talked about, this sounds like a very combat heavy game. But one of the best things about this is the town management and housing. Very early in the game, you get to the town of Sacrament, which has been run down and partly destroyed. Your job is to help repair and upgrade these buildings. You can go out and mine rocks, chop trees, gather clay, and then you, you have a bunch of tools to do this and you can upgrade those. And then you go back into town and you can use all of those resources to craft your weapons and armor and items, or you can use them to help rebuild the town. On top of this, these, these building tasks, there's also certain quests that tie into this, such as going out and finding the chef who's gone missing, bring him back to town, and he'll start working at the, at the food place. And he'll start selling you food from his shop, so you don't have to worry so much about crafting your own food. On top of this, you can do building projects that unlock shortcuts and unlock different areas of the town. And overall, it's something I really wasn't expecting to be as fun as it was. Keep progressing the main story and you even unlock the ability to purchase houses. I bought one near the near the central like circle area and as soon as I bought it someone ran up and said by the way this house is haunted so your stuff might move around which is just a really good touch. Not many games do this and not many games do it well. It kind of feels a bit like a fable kind of play style when you're in the town and you're doing stuff. And yeah, it just adds a level of depth that I wasn't really expecting. You go out and you do these big missions and you get all these, these items and all this loot but then when you come back maybe the Maybe the blacksmith is upgraded. You can go and check it out. It now sells tier two gear. Maybe they're, they've built a new pathway up somewhere and you can go check out where that leads. It's really good. It's really interesting. And I'm looking forward to coming back in the future and seeing what more they do with this. Now, I think I've been very, very positive And I, I've got to say, everything I've talked about has been a win. Every single thing so far has been really good. But now I want to talk about something a little controversial that I personally didn't enjoy. I want to talk about the timers and the time gating of the content in the game. So. The devs here have gone with a, a time-based system for lots of the upgrades and, and systems in the game. So you can go out and farm resources with zero time restriction. You can go and get your pickaxe, go out and mine ore all day long. But then when you come back and say you want to refine, you want to turn your, your ore into ingots or you want to turn your, your wood into wooden beams, you have to wait. You have to wait for those items to process, which has survival elements, but it's not a survival game. When you want to do like a big building project, you have to wait for those projects to be done in real time. So say you want to upgrade a building, they start at like one hour, but then some are multiple hours long. And I think that's okay. It's, it's okay to pad things out because you are going out and adventuring for multiple hours at a time. So when you do go out on a big quest and you come back and a building's complete, that doesn't feel so bad. But then there are other points where the time gating comes in as well, and it feels a little less organic. There's daily and weekly challenges. There's a, there's a guy in the main town that gives you daily and weekly challenges. And these give you a lot of your crafting recipes and, and, and good gear. And I always felt I was running out of them. I never felt like I had enough of these challenges. You get like four a day and it always feels like there's not enough. I spent ages uh, saving up resources, putting them into a building project and rebuilding the inn because it's one of the first buildings I found. And I was like, oh, this could be a, a cool building. I rebuilt the inn. I waited hours for its build. I went over there and there's a bed and you go up to the bed and it says, log out in the bed for, I think it said log out for four hours and get a buff. So you, you lie in the bed, you, you come off the game, wait four hours and you get a buff. That didn't hit too well for me. I just wanted to mention it that this, this time system seems to be everywhere. It seems there's a lot of stuff that has this timed system. In my experience, although it didn't ruin the game or have a, a really bad impact, it didn't really add anything. I, I guess I just don't see why it's needed or why it's in the game. Okay, let's overall review. Overall review, this game is an early access and some of the issues or things that I've mentioned might be fixed or changed by the time you're watching this later down the line. So let's just say that at the start. Overall, this game is a work of art. It's beautiful, it's detailed. There is an incredibly immense amount of time put into everything in this game and you can feel it. It's full of charm. It holds up to what you would expect from the people behind the, the Ori games and the combat matches the, these graphics and this, these animations. It's fluid, it's challenging, and there is a ton of depth. I would say lots of the systems in the game feel fully complete. This might be an early access game, but it feels as polished as a finished product. When you're not out fighting, the town building system and housing are incredible. It just reminds me of like Fable or Digimon World where you you build up a town and you see it grow and you, you, you see the interactions that your 
your purchases and your things you're doing has on the place you are. So overall, what we have here just feels good. I think they've done a, a flawless job on creating a world that you care about and that you can, you can help change. Where it falls down for me is the time gating of stuff. I really didn't like it. I don't like how you're waiting on daily and weekly challenges in what for me was a single player game and you're required to do things in, in real time. Combined with this, I didn't really like the repetitive need to grind the old zones for these challenges and for gear and for XP. The story was amazing. The zones are fantastic. And I just wanted to keep playing and keep progressing. And I felt like there were too many, too many systems just trying to drag me back. Overall, for an early access game though, this is a work of art. It's more polished than most games on release. And I'd say it is a must play if you like Souls-like games, Souls-like combat, or you like this art style. It's really unique. It's definitely worth your time. And the amount of content right now, although limited, is really, really, really good. So I would say if you're on the fence, definitely put this on your wish list because it is only going to get better. And if you like what you see, I would grab it. Definitely want to support this game and what they're doing here because it, it's something a little different and it's something I didn't think I'd enjoy as much as I did. I can't wait for them to do another big update so I can go and play a different build. I did everything in this build as a strength playthrough and I really want to go back and do decks and have like little fast weapons and bows and be more like dexterous and rolling around and I, I want to do that in the next big update so I'm excited I think this is this is something special and I, I hope you see what I see here and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did but that's it from me really unique game and I'd love to hear what you think of it in the comments that's it take care and I'll catch you in the next one